Heading into week eight, our understanding of usage and deployments are about as good as they're going to get. Today, we are continuing our love-hate series as we look at three players I'm trying to start everywhere and three players I'm looking to sit. But before we dig in, head over to 4for4.com and use promo code YouTube to get yourself 25% off any subscription plan. Start Kareem Hunt. Though the passing offense, and thus Patrick Mahomes, has looked a little disjointed throughout the 2024 season, the Chiefs have been able to lean on their run game despite injuries hitting both their running back and wide receiver rooms. This comes on the back of an offensive line that is tied for second in adjusted line yards with the interior of Joe Thune, Creed Humphrey, and Trey Smith, prizing one of, if not the best groupings in all of football. This bodes well against the Raiders' run defense that allows 4.8 yards per attempt, which ranks 26th in the league, and 60.1 between the tackle yards per game, the most in the league. Kareem Hunt isn't the most awe-inspiring fantasy option in the year 2024, but the team is making the most of what they've got, and it makes him a fringe RB1 or RB2 in a fantastic matchup. Hunt was limited in Wednesday practice. If, for whatever reason, he misses Week 8, keep an eye on Samaji P. Ride as a potential flex or deep league option. Start Corlin Sutton. As we mentioned in our moves to make video earlier this week, Corlin Sutton has been on a downward trajectory, culminating in zero fantasy points in week seven. This came just one week after he grabbed his second touchdown of the year and coincides with some younger players seeing more action. Through the first six weeks of the season, the veteran easily led the team with an 80.1 route participation. In week seven, he barely edged out rookie Troy Franklin, 69.7% to 63.6%. Franklin and fellow rookie Devon Vele have now set new career highs in route participation over these last two games. But after controlling the Saints via the ground game in Week 7, they'll have a chance to feature Bo Nix and what profiles as an easy matchup against a soft Carolina Panthers secondary. It's hard to pinpoint exactly where the best place to attack Carolina is because they're talent deficient pretty much everywhere you look. The Panthers have pressured opposing quarterbacks at a league low 22.9%, and when they're unable to infiltrate the pocket, the secondary isn't upholding their end of the bargain. On pass attempts that are deemed no pressure on the year, Carolina is allowing 78.2% completion rate, which is 30th, 8.8 yards per attempt, which is 32nd, and a 125.2 QB rating, which is also 32nd. This accounts for 208.4 yards per game. This presents quite the issue, as the Broncos lead the league with a 4.1% adjusted sack rate and a lowly 18.2% pressure rate in Week 7, with right tackle Mike Valenci returning to the field for the first time since his Week 2 MCL sprain. This could be a situation where a squeaky wheel narrative gets Sutton some extra looks against what is very likely the worst defense in the league. He's great as a flex play, and if he has a great game, we can see if any hungry managers want to take the plunge. Start Darnell Mooney. Through the first four weeks of the season, it seemed like we had a pretty darn good pass defense on our hands in Tampa Bay. They allowed a moderate 221.5 yards per game, which was 19th, and a negative .03 EPA per dropback, which was 15th, while holding Jalen Hurts and Jaden Daniels below 200 passing yards. The wheels have since fallen off, as they have allowed the second most yards per game and the 10th most EPA per dropback over these last three weeks. Those numbers could very well look even worse had they not faced Spencer Rattler in his first career game, they still have managed to allow 9.4 yards per attempt when targeting the wide receiver position since week five. This is all to say that Drake London and Darnell Mooney are great options here in week eight. Mooney has had a career resurgence season thus far and actually leads the team in route participation by quite a bit. His 91.1% rate is not only higher than London's 86.0%, it's actually higher than every receiver in the league outside of Jamar Chase and Malik Neighbors in his five healthy games. He's not out there just running wind sprints either. He has six or more targets in five of seven games, including that wild 16 target game back in week five against the same Bucks defense. I'd lay a couple bucks down that he doesn't get to 16 targets again, but eight to 10 is very much in play. Sit Christian Kirk. The return of tight end Evan Ingram was always going to eat into Christian Kirk's upside, but times have been even more tough than we expected. The slot receiver had a three-game stretch in which he averaged 8.6 targets, 6.3 receptions, and 72 yards, clocking in his fantasy as wide receiver 19 with 12.8 half PPR points per game in that three-game span. And while his route participation has fallen slightly from 76% to 70.3% in those last two weeks, his targets per route run have dropped from 28% to 20%. That latter mark 
ranks him fourth on the team behind Gabe Davis, Brian Thomas Jr., and of course Ingram. He's barely beating out running back the Ernest Johnson's 17% mark. We should expect a bounce back out of this range of a pass catching running back at some point this season, but this matchup against the Packers might not be the best time to look for it. Green Bay is allowing an 84.7 QB rating when targeting opposing slot receivers, the eighth best mark in the league, and they currently rank 11th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to the wide receiver position. They also happen to be leading the league with 17 takeaways if you're looking for a streaming defense. Even in this difficult matchup, both Thomas and Ingram should stick in lineups, but the juice isn't worth the squeeze for Christian Kirk. Sit Zach Moss. Was that ankle injury that Moss suffered back in week five as serious as it looked? Apparently not, because he's suited up in these last two games since, but it certainly seems like he's lost a step. Through the first five weeks of the season, Moss averaged a moderate 2.3 yards after contact and a 10.5% broken plus missed tackle rate. Per PFF's numbers, he had a decent 41.7 elusive rating. These were all just a guy numbers, but they've gotten much worse. Over the last two weeks, Moss has a league worst 0.8 yards after contact, and Sports Info Solutions hasn't credited him with a single broken or missed tackle, so that rate is also last. His longest run in those two most recent games, seven yards. Chase Brown was always going to get some more work as the season went along, and Moss's recent performance, even if it is injury related, is forcing the team's hand. Brown was clearly the second fiddle to start the year out, seeing only 24.3% of the team's snaps, 24.1% of the team's carries, and a 5.8 target share through three weeks. In this last month, those numbers have jumped to 47.4%, 52.5%, and a slight uptick to 8.9% of the team's targets. Brown's target rate is very unlikely to jump even to a modest 12% range, but he is finding himself in the field a little bit more in third down scenarios. This further eats into Moss's floor and ceiling, and the Eagles, the Bengals' Week 8 opponent, rank 7th in AFPA to the running back position. Next week, I guess the Raiders, Moss will be in a much better spot. Sit Justin Herbert. As evidenced last week by a Broncos team that ran for a season-high 225 yards, the Saints' run defense leaves a lot to be desired. That explosion came just one week after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers ripped off 277 yards, 136 yards of which came from Sean Tucker, who entered the matchup with 30 rushing yards in 16 career games. Not a great look for the defense, but certainly fantastic for opposing backfields. But what is good for J.K. Dobbins and maybe Kamani Vidal is not likely to be great for Justin Herbert. Teams would be smart to attack New Orleans on the ground, and there are a few teams more willing to take the route than the Los Angeles Chargers. Including last week when Herbert dropped back a season-high 44 times, the Chargers now rank 26th in pass to rush rate and 25th when holding a lead. I mentioned that simply because they are 7.5-point favorites this weekend. The Saints are also currently 5th in QB AFBA, and as you can probably guess after these recent explosive performances, they are 30th in running back AFPA. Simply put, they are run-funnel defense playing a team that is more than happy to run the ball. Herbert should be kept on benches, and is someone you'd probably be best replacing even at Superflex or 2QB leagues.